Hi everyone, I'm Shaylin here with Reedsy. Today we're going to be talking about stakes and specifically eight ways to raise the stakes in your manuscript. Stakes are one of those core elements that you really need in a story. Stakes are essentially what the character has to lose if they don't succeed at achieving their goal. You don't want your character's possible failure to put them at a net neutral. You want it to put them at a net negative. Think of it as the story's bargaining chip. If there's nothing on the table, the character can either walk away or just fail at any moment and it doesn't really matter. There won't have been anything lost and there won't really have been any possible change in the story. It'll feel kind of meaningless, but more than anything, readers need stakes in order to invest in the conflict. Stakes are a way of making the conflict feel important. They can really raise the tension. You really want your character to be so intertwined and involved with the plot and the storyline that the only way out is to go forward. But if they're to fail or even if they are to succeed, there has to be something to be lost. That's what stakes are. Let's talk about some different ways to raise the stakes in your story. First of all is to create goals. Like stakes, goals are one of those fundamental core elements of story that you need. Stories without goals aren't really stories. A character having a goal is paramount for a good story in general, but it's especially important when we talk about it in relation to the stakes. The entire purpose of stakes is that if the character fails, they have something to lose. That means they need something to fail at. Your character needs a goal to pursue in order for there to be stakes at all. You can't really have stakes without a goal, so make sure you know what your protagonist's goal is and what they're pursuing. If you're not sure, it's probably pretty integral to the central core conflict and storyline and concept of your book. Ask yourself what your character is trying to move towards. Step two is a really simple tip, and it's to add a ticking clock. This is a simple trick to raise the stakes, just add a time limit. We can see this most clearly in an action movie example. The protagonist is trying to defuse a bomb and if they don't then the entire city or the entire planet, wherever they are, is going to explode and everyone is going to die. So the stakes are pretty large. Stakes are going to feel significantly higher if there's a ticking clock and if there's not a lot of time left. We know this moment in a movie, we see the clock ticking down one minute, now it's at 30 seconds, now it's at 15 seconds, 10, 9, 8, the character still hasn't successfully defused the bomb, everyone is holding their breath. This is a classic example of a moment of really high stakes. You can incorporate this same idea of a ticking clock into a lot of stories without needing something as overt as a literal ticking clock. Add some kind of time limit or constraint on your character. Say they have a train to catch because they need to get on the train to go to their best friend's wedding because they're the best man and this is the last train of the day. They have to achieve whatever it is they're trying to achieve and still have time to get on that train. Step number three is to raise the emotional stakes. A lot of the time when we think about stakes, we think about what there is to lose externally, which I will talk about in a minute. But it's really important to think about what's at stake for the character emotionally. Emotional stakes means that if the character fails, they're going to have to deal with a significant amount of emotional distress or fallout. Try tying the character's external goal to something internal. Give them some kind of deeper emotional investment in this conflict. Let's say you're writing, you know, a fantasy story and the character is setting out on a quest to defeat this evil force. The story is going to gain so much more meaning and a lot more emotional stake. If the character has been trying to find this evil force and kill it because it's what killed their family as a child and they've been seeking revenge for their family their entire life, now there's emotional stakes. If the character doesn't succeed at achieving their goal, they've also failed to get revenge on their family members, something that's really important to them and really integral to them. Really the key to emotional stakes is just to make sure that your character cares about something. It can be a person, it can be an object, it can be an opportunity, it can even be an aspect of themselves. But your character does need to care about something and that thing needs to be what's on the line in order for there to be emotional stakes. However, we also want to raise the external stakes, which leads us to tip number four, raise the consequences. What are the clear-cut possible external consequences if the character is to fail? What is going to happen externally, their emotions aside. Say your character is setting out to steal a valuable piece of artwork and we can put some emotional stakes into the situation. Let's say the artist of this painting was the main character's grandmother and it was stolen from her. The protagonist has a bit of a fraught relationship with her grandmother, it's a bit on the rock, and her grandmother is now on her deathbed and the main character knows that one thing she can do to repair her relationship with her grandmother to get back in her grandmother's good books is to go retrieve this painting, something that her grandmother cares deeply about and has always wanted back. So this is the protagonist's chance. We've got emotional stakes here tied into this painting. That's great. But what about the external consequences? 
If we know that the external consequence for stealing this painting is going to be life in prison and a huge fine that maybe the main character cannot afford to pay and is going to have huge repercussions for herself and her family, this is going to be a much tenser plotline with higher stakes if those are the consequences than if she's just gonna get kind of a stern letter, little scolding from the art gallery curator. We need to have significant possible external consequences in order to feel invested in this situation. Tip number five is to create a necessary sacrifice. This is a situation where the character is going to lose something. You put your character in a situation where they have to choose between two things that they want. Oftentimes this is choosing between their external goal and their internal goal, or choosing to face external consequences in order to avoid emotional stakes, or vice versa. Basically this is a situation where something is going to be lost, some kind of consequence is going to be faced, but the character is put in the position where they need to choose which of these things is going to be lost. If the character is a more typical hero, we're probably going to see them choose the thing that harms themselves but betters the group, and potentially vice versa for a more morally ambiguous character. Oftentimes this means achieving the external goal while facing some kind of emotional fallout or distress personally. Tip number six to raising the stakes is to avoid plot armor. This is a phenomenon where the reader feels secure in a certain character's survival because this character is the focus of the plot. A lot of the time plot armor develops when characters continually survive ridiculous situations that no one on earth would realistically survive. TV series Game of Thrones was actually heralded and praised for its lack of plot armor in the earlier seasons. They really set up this anyone can die at any moment mentality and it really raised the stakes. However, the show was increasingly panned <laughs> for failing at this as it went on as core characters in the conflict gained plot armor and it was clear that they weren't gonna die. It really did remove the realism and complexity from the series, which is what a lot of people enjoyed. The stakes were really high because really anyone could die. It's pretty rare to find that in a series. Of course, avoiding plot armor doesn't necessarily mean you need to kill off half your cast just to make a point, but you do want to avoid unrealistic situations where your character survives or succeeds, where a character without plot armor probably wouldn't. Plot armor essentially sets the precedent that certain characters will survive or succeed because they have narrative precedence. In the end, it just feels pretty artificial. It's not how life works, and even though it is kind of how stories work, we don't want it to feel like it's how our story works. For the next tip, you want to look at stakes in the smaller scope as well as just the larger scope. Of course you want to make sure your story as a whole has stakes. But if you feel like you're losing grasp on the stakes, look at every individual scene. Especially if you struggle with redundant content and your stories often have redundant scenes, ask yourself what the stakes are in every individual scene. This can help you determine which which scenes are necessary and are actually pulling their weight in the plot, and which ones could maybe be cut or revised. But paying attention to stakes on the smaller scale can also help you ensure that there's a clear escalation of stakes rather than just heightened stakes in specific moments. And finally, tip number eight is to put the character in moral no-win situations. This is a little similar to making them face a sacrifice. This is really a situation where a character has to make a choice and both choices involve some aspect of immorality that actually challenges them. A really classic example example of this is the trolley problem in philosophy, you know, where you ask people if they would kill one person to save five others. These kinds of moral no-win situations can be really powerful in fiction, and they really force your character to reveal and face the emotional stakes, especially if that emotional stake is within themselves and now they have to make a decision that sacrifices or compromises some aspect of their morality. Putting a character's core values and core morals on the line is really high emotional stakes and it can be especially high in these situations where there is no clear right or wrong. They're going to have to make some kind of moral sacrifice and have some kind of emotional or moral fallout no matter what they do. It's just a matter of what. So those are eight tips for raising the stakes in your story. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new videos from us. We've got new writing, editing, and publishing tips every Tuesday and Friday. Until next time.